Hello, friend. I'm Rich Stocks. This is Prayer School. Stay there. I'll be right back with today's lesson. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Hello, friend. I'm Rich Stocks from the Healthy Christian Broadcast. In 1997, I heard a cassette tape by Dr. Joel Wallet called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Dr. Wallach teaches that we all have the potential to live healthy lives well beyond the age of 100, and if you give your body what it needs, it will do amazing things. I want to invite you to join millions of people who've already heard Dr. Wallach's life-changing message. Now you can hear this message free of charge on our website at mineraldoctor.com. Here are three simple steps you can take right now to put you on the path to a longer, healthier life. Listen to Dr. Wallach's message, schedule your free health evaluation, schedule a free phone consultation. We have an experienced team of people standing by ready to help you with your health and well-being. Free wellness teaching, free health evaluation, free phone consultation, all found at mineraldoctor.com. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you reach your full healthy potential. Hello everyone. For many, many weeks we've been in a series called Prayer School. We're hearing from people. We're getting some phone calls and emails and texts and WhatsApp messages. And some of you have had questions about things I've said and I will be addressing those. Keep in mind that we usually film many weeks ahead. So by the time I get your message, it's going to be you know, usually many weeks before you're going to hear me reply to that. Let me just say this. If you are being fed by this ministry, if you are receiving instruction in the Word of God, I want to encourage you to act on Galatians 6, verse 6. Dear Rich, what does that say? It says that when we are taught the Word of God, when we receive instruction in the Word of God, then we are to communicate. Other translations say to share, to give. In other words, we are to sow our finances into those ministries that God has chosen to send us His Word. That is how we honor the Lord with our wealth, by honoring those, by honoring His Word. And how do you honor His Word? You honor His Word by honoring those God has chosen to send you the Word of God. So we want to invite you, become a partner, and help us. We are sending God's Word to the entire world through television and social media, and that is where all the money that comes in. Uh, God has blessed me with a business. I don't have to take a salary, not that that should make any difference in your giving. When I give, I see myself, I'm giving to that minister. But I'm just letting you know that 100% of your partnership gifts go into the television ministry. We have no one we have to pay, no employees. We have people. We do have some things we have to pay for editing and so forth, and we, we hire that out. Uh, but all your money goes into sending God's Word. So let's pick up where we left off last time. And by the way, anyone who sows any seed into this ministry, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. The shaking is just going to get worse, my brother and sister. I'd like to teach on that today, uh, the verse that, where God said, I, the Lord, will shake all nations. And He will, and He is. And this book will help you. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But Jesus told us the secret of an unshakable life. You can build your marriage on it, your business, your ministry. And so we talked about pray in faith, stay in faith, and then we segued into a series after that, a sub-series, if you will. What do we do after we pray? We looked at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. When you pray the prayer of faith, and right now we're still talking about the prayer of petition. We're talking about you asking for something for you. Rich, why are you spending so much time with that? Because that's the one Jesus said the most about. It's the most basic type of prayer where you are asking God, your Father, for something for you. 
And yet there's so much confusion. I hear people, they say things to me. Uh, people, some of the comments that are coming out, I would have liked to address some of these things right now, but I will get off. We'll never get to today's lesson. But we've seen that you believe you receive when you pray, and at some point after that, you shall have it. And I've showed many times, I've likened it unto a real estate closing. I received the property at closing. That's when all the paperwork was signed, my name was on the deed, it was mine. But that's very different from possessing the property. Possessing means I'm either going to move in or I'm going to have a renter move in. I'm going to take possession of that property that is now mine. And we've seen over and over again, I would encourage you, go to our YouTube channel, Rich Stocks, The Healthy Christian, and watch all the prayer school lessons. I don't know what number we're on now, but we've been doing this for many months. And we saw in Daniel chapter 9 that Daniel prayed a prayer, and God answered his prayer immediately, but it took three minutes for the answer to show up. And then we saw in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel prayed a prayer, and God answered the prayer immediately. How do you know? Because in both cases, an angel showed up, and that angel said, the moment you began to pray, the command came for me to come. But the first time it took three minutes, then in Daniel chapter 10, it took three weeks, 21 days. It wasn't God delaying the answer. In both prayers, God answered the prayer immediately. Well, that's why Mark eleven twenty three 23 teaches, believe you receive when you pray, the moment you pray. And it says, and if you do that, you shall have it. But we've seen in James chapter 1, over and over again, that anything we ask God for, we ask in faith, but then it says nothing wavering. Well, I taught that for decades, and I didn't realize the wavering doesn't occur when you ask. The wavering comes later. And we looked at the example of Peter stepping out of the boat. Yes, he stepped out in faith. It was a hybrid faith. I don't have time to go back and teach on that right now. But he stepped out in faith. But then, when he considered the winds and the waves, he began to sink. He began to sink. So he stepped down in faith, but that's then Jesus, whenever he caught him and he saved him there, brought him up out of the, the water, he said, Why did you doubt? O ye of little faith. So as that doubt entered in, the faith decreased. And we talked about teeter-totter faith. And I know, I've told you, there's a well-known minister who teaches that we don't have a faith problem, we have an unbelief problem. That is not accurate. My brother and sister, it is exactly like cold and heat. When heat goes up, the cold goes down. If the cold is increasing, the heat is decreasing. If doubt is entering in and increasing, your faith is decreasing. Make no bones about it. I don't have time to teach all of that over again. Go back, watch all those prayer school lessons. We may have a certificate sometime. I don't know. I've considered turning this, this into a, a Bible course on prayer, perhaps. And it'd be good for you to watch every single one of them. But we talked about what do you do? Yes, pray in faith, stay in faith, but Rich, how do we do it? And so now we're going into the how-tos. How to stay in faith after you pray. Because that's when wavering, ask in faith, nothing wavering. The Bible says if you waver, which means to doubt, it says let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So it's very important. You need to understand that here's what's going to happen. From the time that you say amen, and God, He's already answered your prayer. He has granted your petition. But here's what's going to happen. The clock. I'm... Um, as I'm looking in this camera right now, the clock right below the camera is ticking second by second by second. Well, that's what's happening in your life right now. That's what's happening in my life right now. The clock is ticking, my brother and sister. When you say amen at the end of your prayer, in Jesus' name, yeah, I believe I receive amen, the clock keeps on ticking. And the question is not if doubt will come, it's how much time will pass before doubt comes knocking on your door, 
trying to get you to waver. Waver means to fluctuate, to be inconsistent, to doubt, to hesitate, to stagger. I like the scripture where it talks about the faith of Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. Peter wavered. Doubt came in when he saw the winds and waves. And so we need to learn. I, I can't just tell you, hey, after you pray in faith, stay in faith. Now i got to teach you how. How do we stay in faith? Well, we saw last time, last week, one of the things we're to do after we pray is give thanks. And we looked at a scripture on that. And we'll go into that. I'm not going to read it right now because we're going to go into it in just a moment. But we saw that Jesus did this. We looked at a scripture in John chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. We know that Jesus had a friend named Lazarus. And Lazarus died. And some people came to Jesus. Jesus was in a different town ministry. And some folks came and said, your friend Lazarus is sick. And the Bible records that Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. Yet when he got to, the t to Lazarus, and he said, when they came to him and they said, Lazarus is sick, Jesus boldly proclaimed, Jesus, the Son of God, your elder brother, he boldly proclaimed, he said, this sickness is not unto death. And yet Lazarus died. Well, other translations say it like this. This sickness will not end in death. It didn't end in death. But the man did die. But it's interesting what religion will do. Jesus only stayed in the town where he was two days. But when he got to the tomb of Lazarus, he had been dead four days. That's why he didn't get in a hurry, guys. He wasn't trying to, to have a greater miracle. He didn't just stay in town so Lazarus would die. And then you hear all the strange things that are taught that Jesus wanted it to be a greater miracle. Instead of going to heal him, he, he stayed you know, so that when he got there, he would be dead. He'd raise him from the dead to be a greater miracle. No, no, he only stayed. He only waited two days before he left. But when he got there, he had been dead four days. But I want you to notice when he got there, he had already said, this is in John chapter 11, verse 3 and 4, they came and said, Lord, the one you love, uh, he's sick. Jesus heard, he said, this sickness is not in, unto death. But then in John chapter 11, verse 41 and 42, when he got there, it says, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying. So Lazarus died. It says, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Notice he didn't bow his head and close his eyes. I'm not against that. However the Lord, however you want to pray. If you're comfortable bowing your head. I, I like my eyes open, you know, for some reason. But there, I guess there are times, you know, some services and ministers use that a lot. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Maybe it's so that you won't be distracted. So it's not a bad thing. But notice Jesus lifted up his eyes. Why? Well, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of light. So when I pray, I like to look up. I don't see God, but I like to look up. Jesus did it. And my brother and sister, I'm endeavoring to study the prayer life of Jesus. That's who I want to pray like. I want to pray like Jesus prayed. And so Jesus said, he lifted up his eyes. This is John chapter 11, verse 40, 41 and 42. And he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He didn't ask him to do anything. Evidently, Jesus has either prayed something or said something, and now he is simply thanking the Father that the Father has already heard him. Well, we can learn a lot from that. When the Bible talks about prayer and thanksgiving, prayer and giving of thanks, why not look at the example of Jesus where he's already prayed, he's already spoken, this sickness will not end in death. And now he doesn't have to ask the Father again. Now he simply says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. That is what I say. My brother and sister, uh, I've offered this. I have a sheet. Now, I, I would just put it on the website where you could download it. But I want to hear from you. It's not a trick to get your email address. Those of you that contact us, you're probably not going to hear from me. I won't say never again, but right now we have no 
plans. We don't send out consistent things. We don't bombard people, those that contact us. But if you will email me, I want to send you this prayer project form. We've taught on that. This is so you can record your prayers and you can document. Go back and watch the uh, the video called Documenting Your Prayers. You put a date, you put a title. This is the day you believe you receive. And hey, you do not have to ask again. I know there are other translations that say ask and keep on asking. No, don't ask and keep on asking. Believe you receive when you ask. And then when it comes to mind again, simply say what Jesus said here, thank you. One of the ways we're talking about in the previous sub-series, Pray in Faith, Stay in Faith, now we're talking about what do you do after you pray. It's really a continuation. What you do after you pray will determine whether or not you stay in faith. Because when will doubt come? After you pray. When does wavering come? After you pray. When does fear come? After you pray. Not when you pray, after. At some point after. Why? Because the clock is ticking. And the clock is the great tester of your faith. Time. It's not God testing your faith. It, the devil, yes, I suppose he's involved. But time will test your faith. Why? You don't see it yet. You ask for something. You heard Brother Rich teaching, believe I receive when I pray. Lord, where is it? <laughs> don't start saying that. Where is it? Do you believe you received or not? Your faith is the title deed to the thing that you are expecting. And you must stay in faith until you possess that thing that you've asked for. And Jesus taught us how to do it here. Father, I thank you that you've heard me and that you always hear me. So let's get into every time when we're about halfway finished, I'm just then getting to that day's lesson. So let's get into that right now. And today I want to talk about God's peace and God's rest. Hebrews 4 verse 3 says, For we which have believed do enter into rest. What a great scripture. We're not wrestling. I'm just fighting the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith is not a fight as it has been presented by many teachers in the body of Christ. They present it as you are fighting the devil. You're fighting the spirit of infirmity. You're fighting the devil over your finances. You're fighting the devil over your finances. No, my brother and sister, the devil, Jesus spoiled all principalities and powers, made a show of them openly. We are not fighting devils. We're not fighting devils, and you're surely not fighting devils when you pray. You're talking to your father. Forget about the devil when you're talking to God your father. Don't interrupt a conversation with God to start binding the devil. You want to bind the devil? Do it before you pray or do it after you pray, but not while you're talking to your dad. I'd like to get on that today. Hebrews 4 verse 3 says, We which have believed do enter into rest. So it's interesting to me how the Lord does me. I can study, 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 and I think about these things, and I study, and then I'll go sit in my chair and, and think about it some more. I'm like, Lord, something's not quite finished with this lesson. And finally, there comes a point, uh, I'm ready to print out my notes. Or if I'm teaching in a public meeting, print out my notes. Sometimes I do handouts for the people. <laughs> And almost every time, as soon as I get the notes, keep in mind, I hear I've been asking him for days, sometimes weeks. And almost always, after I print my notes, the Lord will say something. And that's exactly what happened today. Just an hour or two before I came to film today, I had the scripture, We which have believed do enter into rest. And the Lord said this to me, Rich, you hearing an audible voice? No, I've only heard God's audible voice one time. I've told you about that before. I'll tell you about it again someday, but not right now. No, it comes up on the inside. It's like a thought, but it's a thought that you know is too good for you to have thought of and on your own. It's from the Lord. That's all I'm going to say about that now. And yes, you'll be mocked and criticized by the world. Oh, he thinks he hears from God. I'd be more concerned about the believer who's not hearing from God. Je Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yes, the primary way God leads is through this written word of God. I understand that 
I teach that. That's exactly what I believe. But God can speak to you a scripture. But here's what he said to me today concerning this Hebrews 4 verse 3. We which have believed do enter into rest. So if you're in faith, what is the evidence you're in faith? Because you'll be at rest. You'll be at peace. You'll be at rest. Well, what is the evidence that your faith is under attack? Here's what the Lord said. Any sign of unrest, oh, this is good, is a sign your faith is under attack. I'm going to say that three or four or five times. The Lord just said this to me this afternoon, right before I came to film. Any sign of unrest is a sign your faith is under attack, my brother and sister. So God wants you to enter into rest, stay in that place of faith, which is the place of rest, until you possess the thing you've asked for. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, here it is, let your requests be made known unto God. And here's what it says, if you'll do this, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall, it will, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The King James 21 version says, fret not about anything. I like that. That should have been the 11th commandment, fret not. Fret not about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So one of the ways you stay in faith, stay at rest, stay in peace, is with thanksgiving. Let's read it in the Amplified Bible. This again is Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, it says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known unto God. Let your request be known without anxiety. So any anxiety is an attack on your faith. Worry is an attack on your faith. All of these things, any unrest, anything that pulls you from that place of rest and peace is an attack on your faith. Here's the Amplified Classic. It says, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. The message says, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Listen to this. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. So all after you pray, my brother and sister, I, I need to say this, we are not thanking God to try to twist His arm. There are people that teach, yes, we enter in His presence with thanksgiving, enter His courts with praise. It's not to twist His arm. If you want to do some thanksgiving before you bring your request, what I do, when I bring this to God, this petition right here, I don't necessarily start with thanksgiving. I come to Him and I say, Father, Your Word says this. Your word says such and such, and I present a very specific prayer to God. I document it so that I know in the days and weeks and months, and if, if it tarries the years to come, exactly what I prayed the day I believe that I received. But after that, then you have to stay in that place of rest and peace until it comes. And I'm teaching you how to do it right now. Thanksgiving is one of the ways. And the Message Bible says here, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. So I'm teaching you that after you pray, if you want to give thanks before, that's fine. As long as you don't think that you are buttering God up to try to get more favor to get your prayer answered. The prayer is answered because He's promised it in His Word. He's guaranteed it in His Word. You don't have to thank Him and praise Him to try to get Him interested in answering your prayer. We should be thanking and praising God all the time. But when you come to bring a petition, just bring the petition. Bring the request. And then after you do that, you don't have to ever ask him for that again. Now, if he leads you, if you have prayed something, say, for physical healing and you're in a service and they call out what you have, you just ask the Father for, for an answer for health and healing in your left knee and you're in a service and the minister calls out, someone here has got a problem with your left knee. Yes, by all means, go up. Let the man or woman lay hands on you. That is not what I'm saying. But you don't have to keep asking God, oh, God, you know my knee's hurting. It's hurting worse today than yesterday. No. 
you ask Him, you believe you receive, and then, yes, you can ask for further instructions, but you believe you receive it when you pray. And every time it comes to mind, thank you. What are you saying? Thank you, just like Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you have heard and answered my prayer. Other translations say if you do this, the peace of God will guard your heart and your thoughts. It says this peace will control the way you think and you feel. God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. Feelings will rob you of your faith, my brother and sister. If you're led by them, we're going to have feelings, but don't let them lead you. I was at a service just, I think, last night, and the minister talked about feelings, you, you know, not following them. Yeah, feelings come. But they are not good leaders. Don't let your feelings become your leader. Don't follow your feelings. Follow your faith. There are a lot of days I don't feel anything. I tell Father, I say, God, Father, I don't feel anything, but that's okay. I know you're here. Nothing's changed. If there's anything I need to know, let me know. If it's something I need to fix, show me. I'll fix it. But I don't get all worried about it anymore. It could be your hormones in your body, your fatigue. You didn't get enough sleep, something you ate. It could be anything. But know this, any sign of unrest is an attack on your faith. It says here that if you will pray with thanksgiving, that the peace of God will keep constant guard over your hearts as you rest in Christ Jesus. His peace will keep your thoughts in your heart as you rest and trust in Him. We are out of time, guys. Can you believe that? Remember 3 John 1 verse 2. God desires above everything that we prosper, you prosper, and be in health even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos. It's free to subscribe. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world television, and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.